Okay, the Diablo 4 live stream just ended. And typically what I would do is I would summarize the live stream and create a video dedicated to the live stream. However, this time around, I'm going to do something different. Behind me is the actual footage of the live stream. It was just under two hours. And uh, after I woke up... Uh, I thought, you know what, let me just um, go over kind of like the highlights of the talkie points of the video. Because there was, uh, you know, like a chocolate filled donut, there was a lot more donut than actual filling. So I'm just going to cover the filler, um, you know, the actual good stuff. And um, you guys can go and watch this video if you like it's almost two hours and like i said a lot of it was peripheral stuff um actually they started the live stream about the past and they 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 reviewed season two uh you know highlights of that which uh you know was kind of surprising i don't know why we're talking about season two this is a season three live stream and sorry i'm trying to be positive here uh, I, I really am. Um, and I got to say, I was a little bit hyped after I saw the communication with the companion. Um, it looked very intriguing and we got a little bit more information. So let's let's dive into it. So like I said, they they talked about season two. They reviewed season two. And then I, I believe her name is Melanie. Sorry if I got her name wrong. Um, she knows her shit. I'm in reference to lore. Um, they went to her and, and sorry if I got your name wrong. Um, but they went to her and, uh, they went to her specifically about the quest line in season three. And she went into really more about the lore. Um, and, and I guess she went into the lore to kind of explain the quest line. And I found her very engaging and like, she knows her lore Adam Jackson, <laughs> the cool boy from Irvine, is back, and it's it's unbelievable. Every time Adam is um, part of the stream or talking, like the tone of the chat just changes from like you know, D Force bad. What are you doing, Atomization? Uh, uninstall D Four, install Poe. You know, it goes from that to. You know, cool boy Adam, another W. Adam should be called Adam W. <laughs> it's just unbelievable how a personality changes the tone uh, of of um, of of the environment and who they're talking to. It's it's really humorous to see. Unbelievable that before Adam comes on to talk about the class changes and some of the things they're doing in, in season three with class balances. Um, uh, he wasn't in Albany, he was in Irvine, but uh, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's just like, you know, cause I like to pay attention to kind of what the, how, how chat is taking the information and they're very quick to criticize um, and, you know, in fairness to them too, they're very quick to say when it's a W and immediately when Adam comes on, like the chat just spun uh, and went from negative to positive, right? So they talked about three topics for the seasonal updates. There's going to be a new class update for season three. So the patch notes, they're not, get, they're not, tip, sometimes they'll release it right after the live stream. In this case, they're releasing the patch notes for season three tomorrow. So make sure you go over to Blizzard News and uh, they'll have the patch notes, uh, the full patch notes. That's not coming till tomorrow. Um, Adam went into a brief explanation of how he current, how they currently see the classes and the balance. And he went into the roadmap for the plans for seasonal updates going forward. 
basically there's going to be two every season. There's going to be one in the beginning and there's going to be one kind of mid into the season where they kind of can adjust whatever they need to adjust. And that's kind of the roadmap that they talked about um, for seasons. This is kind of like their roadmap, two adjustments every season, right? So this is, they demonstrated the vault. And as you can see, behind me all the different traps that are going to be part of the vault and that you not only have to kill the enemies but you also have to dodge and avoid all these traps in the vault so they did a little demonstration on what the vault is going to look like they also uh, showed the chess at the end of the vault and depending on what how well you did in the vault um you'll have access to uh, the chests at the end of the vault. But basically, these vaults are going to have a lot of traps in them, different traps. And you're going to have to obviously maneuver around them while killing the enemies that are spawning and that you get to the end and, um, and open up these chests. Pretty straightforward. Then they demonstrated one for the sorceress, the Starfall Coronet, and the meteor that comes with this uh, unique. It looks awesome, really awesome. Just meteors just flying down from the sky and demolishing everything in its path. Looked really, really unbelievable. Obviously, players that play sorceress that you know, Meteor wasn't viable. Now, with this unique, the Starfall, uh, it's going to be viable. And then they went into the unsung Astix wraps for the Druid, where it uh, it embraces Lightning Storm. And as you can see here, as they demonstrated the Druid, just with this aspect, the Lightning just shreds everything in its path. Its path, sorry. Um, again, another uh, unique that just is a game changer. Uh, looks, looks really cool. Um, so they demonstrated only those two uniques. And again, Adam went further into the class balance changes moving forward. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to get uh, into that. They got into a lot of theory and moving forward and and all this kind of stuff. A streamer supported Twitch drop uh, for Twitch streamers. So minimalistic. It, 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 it's got a cloth saddle. It's got a cloth saddle. And all you have to do is watch a Twitch streamer streaming Diablo 4. And you even have... So in order to get it and earn it, you need to gift a sub and buy a sub two vis-a-vis -vis either purchasing it and gifting it or gifting it um, but it has to be two subs and you will uh, earn this this mount um, so they confirm that uh, relationship with twitch and that it's going to happen and it's going to be for everyone that's streaming Diablo 4 on Twitch. You don't have to be part of their program. Um, you just have to be streaming Twitch and the viewers will be able to earn it if they uh, they purchase a sub and gift the sub is how Adam explained it. I'm sure we'll get the details uh, in the notes uh, to confirm exactly how it works. Um, and that's basically it. So my video yesterday really covered everything going on in season three you know as, as as far as our companion um we know they they went in actually they demonstrated it where the seneschal is going to have two skills and um let me try to find it right in the beginning they're going to have two skills and then those two skills are going to be able to um they're going to be able to, we're going to be able to modify it and adjust it to our play style. And we're going to be able to apply, oh, here it is. Where is it? Sorry, guys. 
maybe this is the last time I do it like this. Um, so you can see right here, this is one of the skills. So lightning bolt, right? And you'll see three boxes underneath it. So lightning bolt, you can modify it through the tuning stones um, and you can apply um, effects to it to modify lightning bolt to chain to stun like depending whether it's offense defense so two skills here you go two skills so this one has focus fire and lightning bolt and then you'll see the three tuning stones that we earn by playing the game and you can put them in and you can change what in this example focus fire and lightning bolt will do it can become more offensive it can become defensive you know that kind of thing so there's customization and i have to say i personally think this is their testing ground they're testing this to see how players react how they like it if they like it if they hate it this is a precursor i think this is a testing ground for them regarding itemization moving forward or vis-a-vis -vis some sort of um some sort of stone or ruin system for us to customize our characters in this case it's a companion but i think they're doing it in a very um very controlled way through the companion and they're testing it to see how we like it how we don't like it what the player feedback is and if they see that this is working and players are liking it and they like the customization they're going to adopt this system to a certain in another way to our characters for us to be able to customize for example like in d2 where we have ruins and we can customize our gear and weapons so i think this is a testing ground like they're not saying that but that's me and you know looking into this and the itemization being the next season season four i think this is what their their testing ground is and by the way blizzard uh activision blizzard king why don't you have a ptr man why do you not like put a ptr server on this game you can have the player base doing most of your work and testing man it's so easy i know it's not easy but it's like you get so much feedback from PTRs, it's not even funny. I don't know why they don't do it and why they insist on being so stubborn. Anyway, so we learned a little bit more about that, even though the, my video yesterday does go into this, but we, we actually got to see how th these, these uh, tuning stones impact the skills. Um, so really nice. Look, no doubt about it, I think... The companion is a W. It's a big W. People are going to love it, I suspect. I think this is a big W. Um, and I like the fact that if what I'm saying is true and that they're going to use this information and data to kind of set the stage for itemization, I think it's a good... Um, I, I think it's a good strategy. So good on them. I like this. Uh, I like this. Uh, companions are going to be very popular. Um, now leaderboards. So if I could take away, like if we had, if we had a device here and took all the audio of that live stream and you, and tell the device, okay, listen to the whole thing and tell me what were the major phrases that were mentioned the most, there would be. <laughs> well one for sure a lot a lot a lot of content in in season three there's a lot a lot a lot a lot of content in season three that was said a, a gazillion times in in some form or fashion okay not literally those words but yeah like there's a lot of, we we had to disc there's a lot to cover here in season three there's a lot of content like you know in so many ways that was you could tell they wanted to make sure that was the message consistently across. Oh, there's a lot to talk about today. Oh, we only, we were planning on 90 minutes, but we went over and then someone goes, well, there was a lot to talk about. Yeah, there was a lot to talk about in season three. There's a lot of content in season three. Like it was boom, 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 like constantly bombarded. 
The other thing, uh, so that would, if that machine would pick up on that, that's what was said the most. Uh, the other thing I found interesting is their rationale uh, around why leaderboards are not coming on January 23rd. And my apologies to Activision Blizzard. I said they were not ready. It's not ready that's why they're delaying it well apologies activision blizzard and 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 to my audience i was wrong apparently they are ready they just don't find it right to start it on january 23rd because the leaderboards the vault is meant for someone a character ideally they want a 100 level character uh, but they want someone to at least be in world tier four. That's the only requirement, by the way, for you to go and compete into the leaderboard and access the vault is, sorry, to compete in the leaderboard is to, you you have to be, have completed uh, in world tier four. Okay, ideally they want level 100s, but that's the rationale. So they want to give player the player base uh, a couple of weeks to reach level 100 so now they never said it's coming in two weeks it's coming in three weeks it's coming in one week they said it's coming soon very soon 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 that's i think how they phrased it soon soon leaderboards are coming soon soon very soon that's what they said so they would not divulge exactly two weeks three weeks like i said earlier i was very soon soon um, so they're going to go, uh, they're going to let us know later on exactly when, um, the leaderboards will start. So my question to you is, Hmm, sorry, casual players, you're going to get burned on this one, right? So there's two types of player bases in every game. There's a casual, they only have two, three hours a week, one hour a day, two hours a day, whatever. They have four or five hours, six, seven hours a week, okay, max. They play a couple hours a night, an hour at night, once or twice, three times a night, whatever, right? So it takes them much longer to to, to finish content. And then you have your tryhards, your hardcore player, your tryhards, sorry, that, you know, they are content creators, they stream for a living, and they play 12, 14, 15, 16 hours a day, dependent whether the game's new, old, or whatever, right? So five hours to 15, 16 hours if they're like addicted to the game and it's new, right? Um, so who's going to get to World Tier 4 and Level 100 quicker? The tryhards, right? So again... This is a real slap in the face to the casual players in D4 because they are not, they're like, if we can go back to the launch of the game after three weeks, a month, no, sorry, after five weeks, 80% of the player base hadn't finished the campaign five weeks into the, into the, into the, into the game. Um, so this is, I don't think casuals are casual players that don't have the amount of time that a streamer does, uh, I don't think they're gonna like this. Um, so it's gonna be very interesting. You're gonna see the usual suspects up on the leaderboard and you'll be able to watch them do it because they're probably a streamer. And and I'm a streamer, so, you know. Um, but uh, anyway, so that that's interesting that their reasoning behind it is they see it as a level 100, ideally, uh, event. Right, um, but really, the only requirement is you need to be in World Tier Four. Uh, so that's interesting. So I was wrong. It's not that they're ready; it's just their philosophy. So I will say this though: I should have known better because, see, in typical Activision Blizzard King style. So I've always said a good indication of the future is the past. And Activision Blizzard has always strung along content. They don't want to give it to you all in the beginning. Abattoir of Zir didn't drop till the last month of season two. So I was an idiot not to pick up on that um, and think, wait a minute, they're not going to drop leaderboards at the beginning. They're going to string us along. 
and I still sticking true to my story, I think leaderboards are going to come out in the second month. Um, I originally thought the last month, but now that what I heard today, um, I think I'll meet them in the middle and it'll come out. I don't think it'll be weeks. I might be wrong again, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but I just find it interesting that the season that was communicated and marketed as the leaderboard season, leaderboards aren't there when the season launches. So it's going to be very interesting if that sticks around for season four, which is the season of itemization. Are we going to get the same kind of drip and drop, right? Hey, season four, itemization. Here's all the changes we're making somewhat we're making we're also thinking about this uh guys this is very complicated and we can't see when season four launches it's not all going to be there because this is very complicated stuff and we got to fine-tune everything before we open the door you know that kind of talk um so it'll be interesting you know what the other interesting thing is that i find and i kind of addressed this in another video a while back I find it very interesting. Now, I've watched a lot. I'm sure you have too. Because um, there's been a lot of content updates on various games lately. And new games coming down in 2024. I find it very interesting that Diablo 4, when it comes to their live streams, 99% of the video, what we're watching is of people talking and one to two percent of actual gameplay demonstration and when i've watched other studios talk about their update or their game coming down the pipe it's 50 50 talk in-game demonstration some games are 90 percent while they're talking, they're demonstrating what they're talking about. Like 90%, the screen, what we're watching is actual gameplay footage, cinematics, this, that. And you you hear the person talking, but you see the game being displayed. I, and it just hit me today, you know, watching this live stream. I'm like, this is... And, and their live streams and campfire chats, I would say it's been consistently the same. Maybe some of their campfire chats and live streams have been 80%, 75% people talking and the rest actual gameplay mechanics. Um, so I found it very interesting because you know why I find it interesting? Because when you're a game developer, there's nothing more you're proud of and nothing more that you want to display is the game. You, you don't want your head of studio or your your lead season designer or your quest line designer front and center and talking. You, you, you want to showcase the product, which is the game. Um, so if you're not doing that, then there's nothing to showcase. <laughs> there's nothing to showcase, right? If I got a Lamborghini in, in in my garage and I got my buddy coming over and he loves cars, am I taking him into the garage? you damn right I'm going to take him into the garage. Hey, hey, bud, look what I got, right? But if I don't have a Lamborghini in the garage and he comes over and he he's he loves cars, he's a fan, car fanatic, am I taking him into my garage? No, of course not. There's nothing for me to show him. So they don't have anything to show. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm trying to be positive. That's it. Uh, I, I'm not going to do a deep dive into this because I'll be honest with you. The only things that I really learned uh, out of this live stream is a little bit more showcase on the Seneschal and that the honing, to, the tuning stones or whatever they're called. I forget again. There's three of them, and there's two skills, and we can customize it, which we got a taste of on the notes yesterday anyway. Um, it's great that Adam, and, and by the way, Adam Jackson should be doing 99.9% .9 of the live streams for Diablo 4. 
He's a he's a gamer. He knows what he's talking about. People really are receptive to him. Um, so that's who I would suggest should do it. And um, yeah, we still don't know when the leaderboards are coming out. We know it's coming soon, soon, soon. That's it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sorry. I'm trying to keep a positive, but uh, I'm going to call it like it is. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep calling it like it is because this has to change. This is not right how they're doing things and it's so obvious the toxicity in the chat is like unbelievable unbelievable and i wanted to change because i want to play this game and i have to say right now i do not know whether or not i'll be playing season three it's going to be a last minute decision i think um, maybe i'll hear something that'll get me excited because right now and I'm typically not a on the fence kind of guy, but I'm still on the fence when it comes to season three. Let me know what you think. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll hope to see you next time. Take care.